Awesome guns. Beautiful gun. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. We've got the uh, much-awaited Makarov shootout that we're going to do for you today. As you guys know, or even if you didn't know, I'm a big fan of the Makarov pistol and variants of that pistol. I'm a big fan of the 9x18. It's a wonderful setup. Um, the guns are just very robust. They're well-made. Uh, nice all-steel gun. And uh, it's just a great setup. I love a Makarov pistol. Um, when people refer to a Makarov, this is what they're referring to. This is just your standard, uh, good old, all-steel Mac in this uh, type of setup. This particular one is a uh, Russian commercial export model. It's got the adjustable sights, which is known as a Bacal. Uh, you'll see these pretty regular. Uh, these are pretty common on the market. They're very well-made guns. They shoot very well. But again, they are among the most common of the Makarov variants. We have two commercial models here. Uh, one, uh, actually, I got a nice scratch on the uh, grip there that uh, from when I've been carrying it so much. This particular one's mine. This is Chad's Mac. Um, at one point, Chad was uh, not a huge fan of the Mac, but I finally got him in one. I bought uh, Chad this Makarov one year for Christmas, and uh, they're just great guns. Okay, again, adjustable sights, pretty typical fare for a commercial Makarov. This Mac right here is what I would consider to be the crown jewel of any Makarov collection. This is an East German Makarov PM. Um, very wonderful fit and finish, beautiful bluing. Um, all of the controls are just very smooth and well laid out, excellent triggers. It's got fixed uh, sights, fixed combat sights like you see on a standard Russian PM. The Makarov pistol, from a standpoint of what you see here, they've been produced in uh, Bulgaria, East Germany, uh, Russia, China, and all of them, of course, have their own um, proprietary model and designation for the gun. Um, the Chinese versions are going to demand a pretty good bit of a premium. The uh, true Russian military versions are going to demand a bit of a premium. The Bulgarians are still pretty common out there these days. You can get those for about 279 to maybe about 329 on the top end for a real pristine example. Of course, we do have an original holster. Uh, this is an East German holster that uh, came with my East German Mac. You got one spot for the uh, extra magazine and of course one area for the pistol itself. And that just rides on your side like any other military uh, flap style holster. Okay. Moving down the line we've got the CZ82. Um, these guns are excellent. This is a double stack variant of the Makarov. Of course, this is a totally separate uh, variant. This is not a true Makarov PM. Uh, the magazines hold 12 shots, one in the chamber. And uh, these are just a great setup. If somebody wants a double single action uh, type arrangement in a Makarov variant, that's a high cap. The magazine looks like this. It's a double stack. Uh, I am a big fan of the 82. They also made a CZ83 and a 380. Uh, both guns saw extensive amount of uh, police and military service. Wonderful guns. This particular CZ82 is one that uh, I parkerized for Chad. This was actually one of my first parkerizing jobs that I ever did. Seems to be holding up uh, pretty nice to this day. But we'll be shooting all of these for you today. Another common Makarov variant that you're going to come across is the Hungarian PA-63. What this gun was uh, pretty much intended to do is compete or otherwise copy the Walther PPK. It's an alloy frame gun, aluminum, very lightweight, um, very straight shooting, smooth guns. They got thick combat style sights, similar to what you'd see on the Makarov PM. All of the guns that I've showed you so far are typically called Makarovs, but they are not Makarovs technically. The only gun you consider a Makarov is an actual Makarov like this. But you see a lot of other guns chambered in the 9x18 Mac. A lot of people get confused and think just because it's chambered in the Makarov cartridge that it's considered a Makarov, but that's just not the case. Although these guns are chambered in the 9x18, they are all different designs in their own right. We're going to be warming up a few of them for you. As you can see, we got plenty of magazines here. I went down to Mac Mart, got all the mags I needed. 
The magazines are different. This is a 9x18 Makarov PM magazine that you'll see for this series of guns. You have the alloy floor plate that you'll see for the Hungarian PA-63. And then, of course, you have your double stack magazine that you'll see in the CZ-82. We're going to do a little bit of basic accuracy testing, but the main point of this video is just to kind of do a little bit of a shootout, see them all in action, and uh, just get an idea of which one's best just through a basic series of tests. Let's get started. All right, the way we're going to perform this test is we're going to do some basic accuracy testing. We're going to group about just two or three mags out of each gun at about 12 yards into a standard uh, police silhouette target, get an idea of the group size, and then we're just going to shoot them for fun, hit some gongs, and uh, basically just see how the guns do. This is my East German Mac. I figure this is definitely in the top tier of uh, quality, so see how it shoots. First shot's double action, and the rest are single. Standard uh, double single action type arrangement. As you can see, at typical uh, combat distances, the Makarov is definitely capable of very good feats of accuracy. A lot of those uh, shots that were thrown outside of the five ring were probably my fault anyway. Uh, the gun does take a little bit of getting used to in the accuracy department and just the fit and finish feel of it. Uh, but it's a wonderful gun and most every one I've ever shot, uh, they shoot extremely well. All right, we got another one of my favorite Mac variants, the CZ-82. Wonderful setup, 12 shot mag, double single action. Very, very nice gun. Let's see how it shoots accuracy wise. Every CZ that I've ever shot like this, generally they print high and to the left, but we'll see. Same distance, same ammo. Excellent. Let's see how it groups. So we can see there that the CZ-82 printed, uh, like I figured, pretty low and uh, to the left, actually. Uh, not as quite of a cluster as the Makarov PM posted, but that's about what I expected. Uh, the CZ-82 actually has a uh, very low-profile rifling in it, not unlike a polygonal or hexagonal-style rifling. Very low-profile, and it's supposed to increase the velocity of the projectile a little bit. Um, they are very nice guns, and uh, I think they make up for the little bit of lack in accuracy from the increased uh, magazine capacity, so that's definitely a good thing. All right, we saw that the Makarov PM and the uh, CZ-82 did quite well. We got the Hungarian PA-63 uh, alloy frame, very light gun. These things generally shoot pretty good, so let's see how it does. Uh, this time I'm going to aim, I guess, at the head region and uh, see how it does.
The PA-63 does not have a slide release. You have to pull the slide back physically to unlock it and chamber the next round. Has a decocking mechanism, double single action. The double action on the PA-63 is pretty rough. The magazine release is located on the left side of the frame, unlike the heel release on the Makarov PM. Very smooth shooting gun. Accuracy is pretty much on par with the CZ, but we'll look at the groups. It's very lightweight, easy to carry. It's a great little gun. You can see that the uh, Hungarian PA-63 shot quite well. I did throw one to the right, but I mean, those are all headshots, and at combat distance, that's really about as good as you can expect. Uh, I would have no hesitation carrying that gun for self-defense at all. Uh, there are hollow point options out there for the Max. All right, so here you can see that the cast uh, performance of the Makarov is wonderful. Got a nice tight cluster here, about the size of my fist. You can't go wrong right there. I mean, for a personal defense setup or even just everyday casual shooting, that's a great little target pistol. There's no reason why you can't uh, have a ton of fun with the Mac. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about the guns. They're just really accurate. That's a nice little cluster from about three mags out of my Mac with the cast ammo. Not bad. I've got an IJ-70. That's the Bacale. That's the Bacale, correct. Rustin adjustable sight. Try her out. All right. Yes, sir. Very nice. Can't go wrong there. Very controllable. How do you like that? It's a nice gun. We're going to see if the PA-63 will shoot as good as that Makarov did. I have my doubts, but we'll find out. All right. It's dead on. Actually, not bad. Not and it's bad. a lot lighter than Mac. It is a lot lighter. I think those two or three that I missed was just me. The gun shoots great. Oh, yeah. I like that. All right, Chad is going to double fist the CZ-82s. Go ahead. Can't hit squat. <laughs> but it looks cool. It looks really cool. You make small work of the little plates with one hand. I mean, I think that's very just accurate. good, man. It shoots so good. They do. All right, I'm going to have a go on the PA-63. It's a great gun. I've always been a big fan of these, but to be honest, I really uh, wasn't able to pick one up until recently. Uh, I just bought one of these a few months ago. It's the first time I've got to shoot it today, and so far I'm very happy with it. Definitely a good lightweight gun. Can't go wrong with a Mac. Doesn't matter what you get. All right, we've uh, ran our Macs a little bit. You can see they're great guns. I'm going to show you one more thing that a Makarov is good for. And after the shooting's over and it's uh, Miller time, take your tasty beverage, breach your Mac open, and there you go. The Russians think of everything. The Russians thought of everything. And that's one more reason why you need this gun.